Are you a battlefield player that just really wants to get good with wildcat? Do you slam A at the load screen, finally get in the wildcat, beat everybody to the punch, and then you die quickly after, and you look around and how are people staying alive with the wildcat so long and I can't figure this out? I'm here to help you today. I wanna to talk about loadouts, I wanna talk about how I use them, why I use them, and what different scenarios, and just general gameplay on how to be better with the wildcat. You can go without deaths in the wildcat in current battlefield. You gotta play smart, you gotta have the right loadout, let's get into it so the first part of this video i want to start out in my loadout for the ebaa wildcat so it is absolutely possible for the wildcat to run through an entire game or an entire round without dying it is a super versatile machine it can cover pretty much all scenarios and we're going to talk about why i choose what i choose in the loadout so that you know what to look out for and um, i'll give you some options if you don't have everything available in the wildcat because if you're newer to the wildcat you may not have all these unlocked so i'll give you other options as well the main thing you want to remember when thinking about your loadout really for any vehicle is you want to be able to cover as many different scenarios on the battlefield as you can i want to be able to take out personnel i also want to be able to take out other armor and i also want to be able to take out planes this wildcat is so diverse in its weapon set that it allows you to do all of those if you pick the right loadout so primary weapon i always almost run the 40 millimeter cannon the only time i don't is if i have a pilot that is absolutely supreme and no one can take it out i'll certainly take pop shots with the 40 millimeter cannon i obviously will hit it with an anti-air if i can some pilots who are really good will be able to, to get away from the anti-aircraft missile all the time unless you have somebody who's hacking um or you get them in between flares but i usually always run this unless i have to go to guns to take out a, a plane always run the 40 millimeter cannon it's great against personnel and it's really decent against other armor as well it's not so easy against aircraft but if you get good enough you can certainly hit shots i run anti-air missile as my secondary weapon all the time because with my setup, it is harder for me to hit aircraft, so this is my backup against aircraft. It always gives me a defense to either get them off my back, because I'll get a lock on and they may spin away and flare, or I can actually hit them with, with missile rounds. And I love how quick the, the two shots are on the anti-aircraft. You can go two pretty quick succession, so you can get one hit or two off very quickly. Some aircraft only, obviously only take one, others take two. So this covers my personnel and armor. The anti-aircraft missile covers my air defense. I always run a thermal smoke package once I get it. You'll probably just have smoke discharger at the beginning. Once you get thermal smoke package, I always run that. One, it's anti-lock. Two, it's good cover as well to get out of dodge or to you know make a retreat. It's a pretty decent smoke screen. And I just love not being able to get hit by jets who lock on with the air to ground missile with a thermal smoke package. So huge fan of the thermal smoke package all the time. I pretty much always run repair system. Um, you know, the defense against all rockets and all projectiles is pretty good on some vehicles. This one doesn't have, have it, has the cyber warf warf cyber warfare, wow. Um, protection system, I like repair system because it fits my style more. It's a little bit more defensive, but I'll explain kind of how I play on the battlefield in the second part of this video so that you can understand why I kind of picked the repair system as well. So that is the driver's seat, and those are the reasons why. Once again, if you have any questions in this video, pop them down below in the comments. I'm very good at getting back to my comments, um, and I'd be glad to help in any way I can to help you live longer and prosper or get more kills, <laughs> not prosper for others. Moving on to the weapon station. If you are very early on, go with the HMG. Because remember, we have air covered in the driver's seat and we also have anti-vehicle covered with the cannon. Um, so in this one, you can focus really on personnel. I like using this weapon station as anti-personnel. So I run the HMG and then I just recently got the thermal. You're probably not gonna have the thermal, but this is just an updated site. It allows super long uh, sight lines. Obviously you can see through stuff. People light up like Christmas trees with this thermal. It's amazing and I really like using this as uh, as this weapon station. So I stick to personnel. If you have to run AA guns, you may want to run barrage missile if you have it available in this because this will allow you to stay uh, anti-vehicle as well. It'll give you extra boost for that if you have to run anti-air on the missiles on the driver. You can run barrage missile here to help you against... Um, 
some of the soft skin vehicles. It's not too powerful, which is why I usually stay personnel here. Don't ever run the minigun. Minigun is a total waste of time on battlefield. It takes way too many rounds to put a person down. And with moving, with the vehicles always moving, it, it's such a pain in the butt. So if you have a minigun, that's why people aren't staying in your vehicle because it is a waste of time. So HMG or HMG thermal for me first, um, always because you can, you will allow your gunners to take down more enemies with it. So that is the weapon station. Weapon pod next. Anytime you have the option for 60 millimeter flag pod in any vehicle, this should always be on. It is, I think, the most powerful um, weapon choice outside of the main guns on every vehicle. So if it's available, run it. I know it says AA. It's a, it's it's the best gun against everything. It's great against armor. It's great against vehicles. It's a little hard to hit sometimes, but you can absolutely hit it if you get good with it. And it's unbelievable against personnel. They, I believe, nerfed it a bit. It doesn't have as much splash damage, but it's still excellent. It's still the best uh, best choice in this. If you do not have the flak pod yet, because you're not that far, go with the canister. Go with the canister, go anti-personnel on this, and then back it up on the driver with the anti-tank missile instead of the anti-air and you're just gonna have to really hit some shots um, against uh, planes. You could always keep the 40 millimeter, keep the anti-air, and then um, really just have your weapon pod or your weapon station focus on, focus on personnel while you focus really on everything else. Uh, that would also be an option there, but go with the canister shot until you get the flak pod for me. The kinetic grenade is a little too random and it's really hard for the... Uh, for the gunner to really hit anything it's it, it's just difficult these are straightforward this is straightforward even though it's close range but it's completely useless against vehicles this absolutely can damage vehicles which is why i love it so that is the weapon pod commander seat i don't have thermal sensor array because i don't sit in the seat enough i'm usually driving or gunning um so i don't have that but i always run detection poles and sensor array. i think that's the two options by automatic so there you go so that is my loadout now remember you want to make sure your weapon choices cover all scenarios so if you are in the weapon pod weapon station super early and both of these are focused on personnel like the canister and the weapon station for the hmg then you want over here heavy against land and uh, you want to be against armor and uh air vehicles so you could go cannon or you could go aa and anti-tank you could go 40 millimeter cannon and the anti-air just remember you're going to be covering then personnel armor and air you want to have diversity in your weapon choices that'll help out tremendously so those are the loadout options um once again if you have any questions on those let me know let's go into how i play and three or four items that i focus on when i'm on the battlefield to try to stay alive longer so number one number one i always focus on is angles you want to make sure whether you're in doha you want you want to make sure you're using sand dunes you're using buildings you're using trees you're using environmental objects to play the angle and only expose part of your vehicle because that's going to be way less that they're going to be able to hit which means you should be able to take less damage and whether that's from another vehicle or whether that's from personnel play the sand dunes play the trees play the uh, buildings don't just dive in and expose your entire vehicle um, because you're gonna end up dying way quicker. So I'm not saying sit in spawn. I'm not a spawn sitter. I don't last an entire round in a vehicle sitting in spawn. I'm in it, but I'm, I'm moving smartly. I watch the flow of the battlefield and I play a ton of angles. So make sure you're using the angles. Don't expose your entire vehicle all the time. And you'll get a feel and flow for that, especially on each map. You'll have ways to go about the map or go after specific uh, capture points, whether you're playing break breakthrough or whether you're playing uh, conquest you know you can kind of get a feel of that just try to keep most of your vehicle not exposed if you can help that sometimes you're just gonna be running around like a crazy person and killing as much as you can that absolutely happens too so point number two for me is watching the flow of your own team I don't like to go off by myself with a vehicle, even if I have full gunner spots. Um, for instance, if you're playing Conquest and the whole team's at B, and let's say D's way off by itself, but the enemy has it and you go off by yourself because you say, I'm a vehicle, I'm gonna be able to destroy it and, and capture the point. I try not to do that that often. I certainly capture points by myself and with a gunner, but you have to pick and choose that. So try to see how the battlefield's weighed, where they are in the spots, because you are very vulnerable out by yourself. 
if you are with your personnel, people will repair you, people will take fire, people will pull aggro for you, and because people are trying to get kills, right, and personnel are easier to kill um, than, than vehicles, armor, or aircraft. So you want to be surrounded by friendlies because then you're not surrounded by enemy, and you get three or four, two or three actually, uh, personnel with Empire Recoilless and you're off by yourself, it can be bad news, especially if there are lots of buildings and you can't kill anyone. Um, they can just make keep making pop shots on you and it's, it's not a good day and you may not be able to get away fast enough. So make sure you're watching the flow of the battlefield and you're staying close to your own personnel, especially early on. As you're learning, you'll be able to stay alive longer if you're around your group. Um, so just try to watch the flow and stay near your friendlies. The third and final tip I want to bring forward, which I see people do all of the time in the battlefield. It drives me insane to watch dumb behavior. Don't sit still. As soon as you sit still to start lining shots up because you want to make sure you hit a long range or you're trying to hit where they are, you cannot do that. If you're around buildings, assume someone's above you and about to drop down and C5 you. If you're sitting still, assume someone's going to be behind you just throwing C5. If you sit still, you are absolutely a sitting duck and they will C5 you, they will AT you, they will drop out of planes with parachutes and drop on you. Keep moving you have to keep moving in vehicles then you're not just giving them such an easy target with recoilless with javelins with c5 with the tank grenades now that are out you got to keep moving you got to get good at being able to shoot and drive at the same time it takes practice just keep practicing you can also head to the practice round and play against you know play against bots to learn at least how to drive and shoot at the same time because as soon as you sit to sit still most likely gunners who know what they're doing will jump out because they know that's a terrible idea. Got to keep moving. Keep moving as a moving target, especially when you're going against other vehicles because it's so easy to hit you when you're sitting still. And also play your angles, especially when you're going up against other vehicles because you will win battles against stronger vehicles if you use those two situations, I promise. So once again, if you have any questions, I am here to help you leave them down below. Um, I will try to answer, I will answer all of my questions, I usually do. And uh, I think that's it for now. And I hope to see you out on the battlefield. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye. They hold more sectors than us. We must alter our strategy. Russian forces are now in half strength. 